What's up, Snow Tracks fans on YouTube? Luke here bringing you guys what I'm just going to throw out there and say is maybe the most exciting walk around video I've ever done. I don't know. It's pretty exciting though. What we have with us here is first time in North America, and this is actually one of the very first ones on the ground in North America to be tested. In fact, it is the first one on the ground in North America to any media that is us, a Lynx Rave RE. Um, now we've talked about or heard about, people have speculated about whether or not Lynx would come to Canada, come to North America for decades, literally decades. And there's been internal reasons why Skidoo hasn't done that over the years. This year though, they decided it was time. So a very limited number of models are coming to North America. This is the only trail-ish model, um, is the Rave RE. Now I, I wanna just sort of specify something here. Uh, overseas, they call this the Rave. And while that is cool if you speak a different language, everybody in North America is simply going to read the name and call it a rave. So I have decided that I'm going to call it a rave because that's what all of you are going to automatically assume. And so that if I call it a rave, you don't just say, well, you're Canadian, so that's why you talk funny, eh? So I'm going to call it a rave. That's where we're at. Now, let's talk a little bit about this sled. This sled is not a renegade. And a lot of speculation online already after the video we posted yesterday, um, about is it just a skidoo and does it just do the same thing as an XRS Renegade? Is it, why would I buy one over the other? I'd like to start this by saying that no, this is not just a Renegade. Um, this sled is very different both in intended use and in how it feels to ride uh, and there are a number of reasons for that but most importantly is that Skidoo doesn't claim or I guess Lynx BRP doesn't claim that this is unequal to the Renegade. This is different. Uh, and the reason it's different is because in Scandinavia where this sled is built, they don't have groomed trails. Um, if they do have groomed trails, they're very few and far between. Most of the time, riders over there are using ungroomed trails that are fairly mega whooped out. The best they can hope for is for some fresh snow to fill in some of the holes, but after a while, as we all know, that gets whooped out too. So this sled is actually built to be ridden super hard, in huge bumps, kind of like an endless snow cross track. To me, that sounds like borderline hell, but I mean, to them, they love it, so that's great. But that's what this sled has been designed for, baseline. Um, here, we have snowmobile trails that are groomed, groomed in where we are here in Ontario, three times a week. So my curiosity with this sled is gonna be, how does it perform on a groomed trail if it's designed to be off trail or, or on ungroomed trails? How is it gonna work for us? And we're gonna answer that question in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. But for today, I just wanna go over the sled, tell you guys a little bit about what it is, um, some of the things that are different about a Skidoo versus this Lynx, and uh, just some of my initial impressions. I did ride this 50 miles yesterday, so I do have some ride impressions that I'm gonna throw in here, mix in lightly, sprinkle them in, let's say. So let's start off, um, platform. This is called the Radian platform. Uh, it is underneath it all very similar to a G4 Skidoo. The front suspension is the same as RAS X. So this is the wider front suspension with a little bit more travel. Um, they have their own name for it. Uh, did I write it down? It's called LFS Plus is what, what Lynx calls this front suspension, but we know it as RAS X and it is the same geometry and the same travel. So that's something to be considered that, that is the same as a Skidoo. The bulkhead, the engine is an 850 E-Tech. The tunnel is basically the same as your standard 137 Skidoo. Um, everything else other than those things is different, everything. So, okay, the gauge is the same. Everything else is different. So let's talk a little bit about it. This is called a 3500 is what's written on the tunnel. Now, uh, in Scandinavia, they don't measure things by inches the way we do. So it's not a 137 inch skid frame. It's a 3500 millimeter skid frame. And in the story that I did yesterday, the unboxing that AJ and I did on this sled, um, I got the numbers wrong. And to all of you who pointed out on YouTube immediately that we were wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, we're not familiar with this whole millimeters thing, so I didn't have the numbers right, but here's how I understand it. I'll probably be wrong again, but let's go with it. 3,500 is 137, 3,700 is a 146, 3,900 is a 155, and 4,100 is a 163 or 165. That's how I see it. It's a 200 millimeter increase in the number anyway for each track length that you go up. That's the best I can give you. Um, moving on. Uh, 
I'm gonna save the rear suspension for last because it is kind of the most interesting part of it all. Up front though, we have completely different skis. They're called the Blade XT. This is a Lynx only ski. Uh, it's lightweight. It has a pretty aggressive keel and um, it's designed, as I said, for those Scandinavian big bump off groom trail riding experiences. My experience with it yesterday was that this ski actually works very good here. I was riding in soft snow on recently groomed trails, but it was softer, fluffier snow, and they seemed to bite really well and, and gave me lots of steering precision. So I think the ski is really good. I really like it. Um, your body work is, as you can see, all different. Um, up here, there are some common pieces, but for the most part, the whole body work is different. I like this raised nose right here. Um, the skidoo tends to drop straight down below the headlight and go like right down to the bumper. But this bulge here, I think, I'm about to make a very bold statement. Everybody knows that we really like the Matrix and how it looks. I think the Matrix is an extremely sexy snowmobile. I think this might be better looking. This is, like this thing is awesome looking. This is a sexy snowmobile and I love how it looks. Um, I think it's different enough from a Skidoo that you can tell that it's not a Skidoo when you see it on the trail. Uh, certainly it's gonna stand out and I don't know, this angle here in the headlights where it's kind of, the headlights are kind of slashed off looks amazing. As I said, this thicker portion up in the nose looks great. These angles in here that break up the Skidoo has sort of more flat pieces here. I think this is just, it's just awesome. It looks great. The side panels are kind of interesting because uh, they do use the quick release fasteners like, like Skidoo uses in two areas, right here and right here. But then they also use rubber straps here and here to pull the side panel off. So I thought that was kind of e interesting because Skidoo went away from using rubber straps. Polaris has finally gone away from using rubber straps. Lynx still uses them. I will say this though, these rubber straps are way nicer than anything else. They actually integrate into the body and sort of sit flush. So they're pretty sweet, works really good. Um, I'm gonna pull the side panel off so you can see under here just for the fun of it. <clears throat> Here's that other one, there. That's what it looks like underneath. You have a P drive, um, P drive clutches just like a Skidoo. Uh, it's pretty pretty similar to a Skidoo under here, um, but it is very compact. I like how it looks. You got a spare belt, your tool kits right here, which is pretty neat for adjusting things. Though I will say this, uh, it seems kind of ridiculous that the tool kit doesn't include a flat blade screwdriver for adjusting your shocks, and we'll talk about shocks in a minute. That is missing. I stopped on the trail thinking I would have that tool and it does not. So you're gonna to need to carry a flat blade if you wanna adjust your shocks. All right, um, these side panels are really nice. They're lightweight and they seem really durable and flexible. So that's cool. Um, moving on, you'll notice back in this area, first of all, the seat is a different seat than a, than a Skidoo. It's actually very firm. Um, one thing we noticed this season is that, is that the Skidoo sleds have very soft seats. This one is very firm. I actually like it. The riding position on this sled is different as well. You're sitting much more upright. So you're higher up on the sled, you're sitting in a more vertical position. I find it more comfortable, I like it better. Um, so I, I think that's a really positive change on their part. Most of the switch gear on here, no, all of the switch gear on here is the same as the Skidoo. It's, it's the same stuff, the gauge is the same. You have your storage bin under here that has a 12 volt outlet in it. Um, the gauge is the more basic gauge from Skidoo, it's not the new upgraded color gauge, which I'm glad about, uh, I like it better that way. Uh, you have a DESS tether security system. And then I like something over here. There's these three little cutouts for switches. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what you would do with those. I imagine you could put in auxiliary lighting and things like that, but I think it's cool that they're cut out here. They're pre-cut to just pop these covers off and throw a switch in for whatever accessories you want to include. That's pretty cool. Um, RER is the same, spin backwards reverse. The grips are different. Um, than anything I've seen before. They actually are really nice. They're smaller diameter and they're super grippy. I found that when I was riding, they, they were awesome. I really liked them. Hand guards come standard. Everything you see on this sled is standard. There's no upgrades. Um, now a, a stylistic difference that you see here um, is this here. Now Skidoo's have this, this piece, this spar right here. You just can't see most of it. Um, on some of them, you can see more of it. On a summit, you see more. 
usually you only see the bottom portion down here, but this is what it looks like uh, on a Skidoo chassis. So I like that Lynx has left this open. What it does, it does two things. First, it looks cool and that's always important, but what it does also is it makes this section of the, of the tank area and the cockpit extremely narrow, like really narrow. So moving around on this sled is so easy and comfortable. There's so much space for you to move around. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. Another thing you're gonna notice on, in terms of rider, cockpit fitting is a couple things down here and a couple important things to note. First, we have this side cover on the footwell, I don't know what you call it. it, has a little hook on the bottom for your toe, but it basically creates an entire enclosed footwell area. Skidoo doesn't have that. They have this upper portion here, but it's open on the sides. And um, I can't say that I've ever really noticed not having this on a Skidoo, it's never been a problem. But I can see if you were running really rough trails really fast and you're constantly in the air getting kicked around, there is the potential for your foot to slide out. But there's another reason I think they added this here. Right here on top of the, on top of the, the running boards, they have added a leveling plate. Skidoo running boards, one thing we've complained about is that they go downwards, right down to where your foot ends, right to the close off panel up in here, is they never actually kick back up. So your foot is always in a canted forward position. Apparently the guys at Lynx have recognized that that might not be the optimal position for really aggressive riding. So they put a little plate in here that levels the foot, the foot rest area. And what I can see is that because it's lifted up here, you don't have this edge on the running board to stop your foot from sliding off. So you could potentially slide off of this raised portion, which is, I'm assuming why they've added this in here. As I said, I've never noticed that on a skidoo that I would need that, but on this sled, I can see that it makes sense. So that's pretty cool. And I do like that change in the foot position. It's noticeable and it actually is very comfortable. So um, that's pretty interesting that they did that. It's something I really like. So now that we've talked a lot about the front of the sled, the looks, the seat, the cockpit, the skis and all that, let's talk about suspension because that's really where this sled is unique and different. And it's one thing that makes it so awesome. Um, Lynx doesn't skimp on shocks. They are using Okay, let me get this right. 46 millimeter KYB Kashima HLCR shocks. These are the highest end Kashima shock, or sorry, KYB shocks you can get. These are the maximum. These are the coolest and they are cool. 46 millimeter, every shock on the sled. Lots of times we see 46 millimeter maybe on the rear arm or whatever. This sled has them all the way around and they are all HCLR. So that's high, low speed compression and rebound. This is a maximum shock package, and it's one of the reasons this sled is gonna retail for a little bit more than, a, uh, say, a uh, Renegade XRS, because you're getting way more shock. And these are awesome. Um, easy clicker adjusts on the front, top and bottom for your um, compression and rebound. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, infinite spring adjustability. That's the shock package. But what really matters is what's back here. This skid frame is called the PPS3, and this is a type of skid frame that Lynx has been using for many, many years, developed specifically for big bump riding. It is completely uncoupled. Uh, the front and rear arms operate independently. Um, and it is probably the most unique skid frame I've ever seen. Let's just tip this thing up on the side so you can see what's under there. One more time. Come on. So what you can see here is the rear arm and you can see sort of where the shock is mounted on the front right here, but it's really hard to see the rear shock because it is mounted right here in the tunnel. It's mounted like this, up inside. Now, if you're seeing from that angle, you can probably see it easier, but you can't see it when the sled's sitting on the ground. It's very weird. Um, the whole system, front and rear work independently, and they actually rate travel separately for the front and rear arm. Um, on North American snowmobiles, we don't do that. We just say a skid frame has X inches of travel uh, because that's how far the rear arm travels. The rear idler wheel travels that far. This sled has over 10 inches of front arm travel. And I think it's like, it might be somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 in the rear. I tried to look up that number, but I didn't have it quickly enough to do this video. So we can specify that later. But this thing feels when you're on it, you're riding on the trail, hitting big bumps. It feels like there is endless rear end travel. You can hit the biggest moguls and it doesn't feel like it's even close to bottoming ever. Even at like 80 miles an hour, it never feels like it's gonna bottom. It's pretty impressive. Um, the sled wheelies like crazy because it's completely uncoupled. It does, it does wheelie like crazy, 
But one thing I was concerned with is knowing that it's uncoupled and it will wheelie, I was worried that it wouldn't go around a corner. Not the case at all. In fact, this thing corners awesome. I have found that it handles amazing as long as you keep your throttle inputs relatively smooth. So when you're going through a corner, you don't want to be on the gas all the time or it will lift the skis up. But if you go into a corner with really smooth throttle, it keeps the skis on the ground and it bites. It transfers weight to the outside ski, loads that outside carbide and just bites around a corner. It works really well that way. It's light steering, um, not super heavy. So it works amazing. Um, honestly, this is so impressed for a vehicle designed to do what this one's designed to do, that it works so good at this point on our trails. And again, more coming on that in our official test ride. Little comment on the rear end as well. Um, how cool are those wheels? Like those are cool looking wheels, right? Why don't we get cool looking wheels like that on sleds in North America? I don't know, they're always just black and boring, but this thing has little red inserts, they look slick. Um, Link sleds and BRP sleds, all BRP sleds this year come with link attachment points on the tunnel pre-installed from the factory. You don't have to buy them, they're just there. So that's cool. And then a final note as I walk around the sled just for fun is the tail light is a dual tail light, one on each side. And it has a very distinct look. It's not like anything else. So when you see this sled from the rear, you're gonna know what it is right away. And uh, they're very integrated, they're very small and, and kind of out of the way, but they're very bright and they look cool. So. Um, I can't think of anything else to say at this point about this sled. Uh, as I said before, it's an 850 E-Tech, so anything that an 850 E-Tech does already, this does already. Um, there's no interesting stuff going on there. Um, I guess that we could talk about the track. The track is a 1.5 Cobra pre-studded, uh, so like Ice Cobra, I guess they call it. It's a great track. It's an inch and a half lug, which is sort of that perfect crossover lug for if you do want to go out in the, in the snow, you can do it on this uh, and get the nose up and wheelie it out in the deep stuff. And it does that really well. I tested it yesterday. Um, or if you're on the trail, it doesn't really sacrifice cooling that much and you get tons and tons of traction. So great, great track choice for this type of a sled. Um, what is this sled? What is it for? Who is it for? Um, initial impressions, initial description from Skidoo would say that this sled is designed for a super aggressive rough trail rider. Uh, I think about my friend Tom in Pennsylvania where he rides a lot of non-groomed trails, bush trails, and he likes to ride really fast. This would be the perfect sled for him um, because of what it's designed to do, what it was designed to do uh, it originally. But that's not all this sled can do. I think this sled is also a really great choice for somebody who is a more aggressive trail rider who maybe doesn't want to pound bumps and ride smoother trails with the occasional rough trail mixed in. My opinion so far has been that it actually handles well enough to be a, a complete trail rider day in and day out. So, and it seems to ride really well. Um, the, the one negative I would say about the rear skid is that the shocks do not include thumb clickers. You have to use a screwdriver, as I mentioned earlier. That's annoying, not the end of the world, but I, have, I wasn't able to adjust them yesterday because uh, as I alluded to, I didn't have a screwdriver. So the, my next ride, I'm gonna soften the rear end up and see how it feels. But even with the rear end as stiff as it is from the factory, it still rode fine on the trail. It handled great. It's very comfortable. The riding position is extremely comfortable. Um, it feels super high quality. Everything fits and, and the finish is just amazing on it front to back, everywhere it just fits and looks super clean. So again, with all of that said, who's this sled for? Honestly, it's for anybody. I, I, I don't know if there's anybody other than your just average afternoon cruiser that this wouldn't be a good choice for. If you can handle the stiffer seat, I think that you need to give this thing a serious look because it has a lot of, it does a lot of things differently than, than what current sleds on the market are doing. Um, and it might just suit your riding style perfectly. If you're not able to find the sled that fits you just right in 2021, this might be the one that fits you just right for 2022. So something to consider. Stay tuned for more. We're gonna do a full test ride on this thing and have it uploaded here in the next week or so. So we wanted to give you guys a first look at our full front to back test ride, all the nitty gritty stuff and our real opinions after lots and lots of miles on the trail. Um, so look for that. 
And of course, you know, look for this thing on the trail because we will be out riding this until the end of the season, putting as many miles on it as possible. We're gonna have this thing all next year as well in our main fleet of sleds. So we're gonna put lots of miles on it and get lots of really great impressions. For now, I wanted to give you guys my first impressions, my first walk around, and I hope that answered some of your questions. I hope it cleared up some things or maybe explained some things that you were curious about. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, make sure you leave us a comment good or bad. We always read your comments and we like to hear from you guys. We like the good ones more than the bad ones, but you know, do what you feel is necessary. Um, and if you haven't already, subscribe because, uh, you know, we are uploading new content constantly on our Snow Tracks uh, YouTube page. So there's always something new coming out, always something new for you guys to see. So make sure that you subscribe so you get notifications every time we do upload something new. On that note, we're done here. So all I can say now is stay tuned for the next one and Look out for me on the trail, because I'm coming.